a boy and a bear in a boat. So far in our story, the boy and the bear have been sailing across the sea for a very long time. And in that time, they've managed to eat sandwiches and avoid a very nasty sandwich. And they've also managed to fish and even catch a monster which they defeated in a battle. And they have just wandered around an abandoned ship called the Mermaid. This chapter, chapter, chapter 21, is called Oops. It was a very loud bang, but it was enough to rouse the bear. He unfolded himself and stood smartly up, turning to see the boy approaching at some speed, carrying the suitcase. Do you hear that? said the bear. What? said the boy. That bang! Er, uh, no, I don't think so. Look, I was thinking. You're right, it would be wrong to take this ship. Maybe if there was a lifeboat on board somewhere, then we could borrow that and it'd be quite cosy, more like the Harriet. And you might feel better about it. No, there's nothing I'd looked, said the bear. I'm afraid we'll have to take the ship. I don't like it. But it does look like there's been no one aboard for a long time. Well, so hopefully there'll be no harm. No lifeboats at all, said the boy. No, said the bear. He looked at the boy more closely. Why is your face so dirty? He said. Is it? said the boy. Yes, really black. And there's the boy looking incredibly dirty. Oh, that's odd, said the boy, licking a hand and rubbing it at his cheek. Looks like salt, said the bear. Hmm, said the boy. Are you sure you didn't hear a bang earlier? Thunder, maybe? No, not thunder. I know thunder when I hear it. The bear stared hard at the boy now, assessing the evidence in his dirty face, his fidgeting manner, his restless expression. What have you done? Nothing, said the boy, looking anywhere except into the bear's eyes. Really? said the bear. Well, said the boy, I just thought I'd make some tea. Ooh, said the bear, because I thought it might cheer you up. Mm. So I tried to light your stove. Oh dear said the bear. It's a bit tricky, that stove, isn't it? said the boy, adjusting his stance as the deck sloped to one side beneath his feet. Yes, it takes a bit of getting used to, said the bear. Somewhere above them there was a loud kerfuffle of flapping wings which turned into a steady flapping flap. Neither of them looked up to watch the bird's departure. And did the explosion make it very big all in the ship? said the bear. Uh, quite big, y yes, said the boy. Sorry. I wondered why my feet were getting wet, said the bear. The sea, having very poor table manners, swallowed down the mermaid with rude haste. 
the hole in the hull that the boy's accident with the stove had made quickly widened as water surged into it, tearing great chunks of wood. The vessel filled with water and plummeted down. The bear managed to hang on to the suitcase as they abandoned ship, but the sacks of food, heavy to begin with, quickly began, quickly became saturated, tugged themselves free of the bear's grip and sank down. One half full jar of marmalade bobbed back up to the surface, but the rest of the food followed the mermaid down into the deep, dark depths. The sinking hulk sulked at the sea above it and a downward tide pulled hard at the boy's legs. The bear threw a thick furry arm round him and held him up as the churning water slapped insolently at their faces. They kicked and flapped and spluttered and eventually the water calmed around them. They floated, the boy gasping for breath, the bear sturdy as an island amid scattering barrels, torn planks and ripped sailcloth. Somewhere, high and far away, a bright blue bird said, Gawk! What do we do now? said the boy. Bitter swim, said the bear. You remember the rock on the map? Yes. Well, that's not far. We'll go there. It's quite a big rock, I think. Almost a small island. Might be quite nice if you never know. And do you know where it is? said the boy. Yes, said the bear with confidence. This way. He raised a paw above the surface and pointed with a small but gentle gesture. OK, said the boy. And there they are, swimming. They put the suitcase on a fragment of the mermaid's hull that was floating nearby and holding onto it, kicked their legs and made steady progress in the direction the bear had indicated. So it might have trees and food and water and stuff, this island, said the boy. Maybe, said the bear. I've never been, so I can't be sure. It's rather out of the way. I'm not sure anyone's ever been there, actually. All oh, right, said the boy. So if we're the first to go on to it, do we get to name it? I'm not sure, said the bear. Maybe, yeah, yeah, why not? Great, said the boy, we can name it after me. They both thought about this for a moment, though in different ways. Unless it's horrible, said the boy, then we can name it after you. Thanks, said the bear. You're welcome, said the boy. They kicked on. They didn't say much more as the boy was soon too exhausted to speak. After a while, the bear suggested the boy should climb on his back and rest a while, so he did. The sun was sinking now, and the boy nestled his face into the fur between the boy bear's shoulder blades. His wet shirt was beginning to dry a little in the still warm sun, and there was more heat rising into him from the bear. Despite the desperate situation, the boy felt strangely cosy. He was drowsy now, his eyelids drooping and springing back open. He focused on the bear's fur close against his face, each hair sharply defined in the beautiful golden light then blurring again as exhaustion pushed towards sleep. He could feel the bear's slow, strong heartbeat bumping against his chest with a steady rhythm. He could hear what 
he could hear that the bear was humming a tune. He tried to make it out, but it was too quiet. It could have been anything. He closed his eyes to concentrate better and the darkness hugged him into sleep. And we'll find out whether they get to dry land next time.